Hello everyone, thank you for uh, joining for this talk. My name is Ivan Markovic, I come from University of Zagreb, Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing, and I'll be talking here about uh, some of our research results regarding human motion estimation and intention recognition. Uh, the outline is as follows. So after a brief introduction, we will introduce the human motion estimation problem and how we approach it, and then we will move on to human intention recognition. The human motion estimation will be about inferring joint, joint states of the human based on position measurements, which are usually done with the motion capture system or IMUs. Uh, as we've said, this can be very practical for human robot collaboration, but perhaps it can also be uh, some sort of a solution for kinematics equations of soft robots which don't have uh, these, these typical motors installed in them. And then we'll talk about human intention recognition, which now is about inferring intentions from some measurable actions of the human. Our example will be on a estimating worker intention in robotized warehouses, and as we've said, this solution can bring us to developing better robot companions. So about human motion estimation, um, there are two, two examples of this. One is by using uh, 3D marker positions and IMUs. So the reason why we decided to use uh, Lee, group, uh, he, Lee Group here is because it enabled us to estimate uh, more accurately the um, the state of the of the human body by avoiding gimbal lock and also by representing uh, more consistently the uncertainties of such joints. We use the uh, extended common filter on Lee groups, uh, which was proposed by Bourmeau uh, and Associates, and we compared it to our colleagues' previous implementation of Neuler Angles based uh, EKF, and this was done in collaboration with Vlad Mezhukov, Ken Westerman, and Dana Kulic from University of Waterloo, Canada at that time. So how do we model our full body? So you can see here an example of the full body along with uh, with attached markers. So our Lee group, Lee group model uh, is as follows. So the hip is uh, basically the origin and it's an SC3 element which consists of a rotation matrix and uh, translation. While uh, hips here, well, the, the hip joints are here model as SO3 members. We see that the knees are SO2 and then ankles are SO2 times SO2, so rotation matrices in two, in two dimensions. The other angle-based approach uh, looks as follows. So basically roll pitch and yaw, yaw are defined for uh, all the joints that have three degrees of uh, freedom while knees have only one and here we also see two degrees of rotational freedom. Uh, this was for the 3D markers, while for the IMUs we only looked at the arm. So two IMUs were placed on the arm and we modeled the arm so the shoulder was an SO3 member while um, elbow was SO2 times SO2 as we can uh, see here, while equivalent representation with Euler angles has the following, uh, following uh, model. So three roll pitch and yo in the shoulder and only two angles in the in the actual elbow. So to get a little bit of a mathematical, um, when we talk about our state space on Lee groups, so the Cartesian product of rotation matrices, we saw that, for example, if we have an SO3, it would look as follows. So we would have these rotation matrices on the diagonals because we are we need to concatenate these states uh, since we have the Cartesian product of several Lie group members modeling the state of the system. Uh, regarding the rigid body pose, it consists of rotation matrix um, and a translation vector. So this is a so-called special Euclidean group and it is used to model the location the, act the actual location of the human in the environment, but also it must include some kind of rotation. Even though our human is not floating, it still can turn, uh, turn around. So what was the idea of why, why did we introduce Lee groups except that, you know, these special orthogonal group and SA3 uh, group uh, along with their matrix, represent matrix representation can mathematically describe well uh, the pose and rotations in, in 3D. Well, the reason is, is because Lie groups have this interesting property that um, 
uh, to every point on the Lie group, we can associate a Lie algebra, which is a linear vector space. And this vector space is isomorphic to a Euclidean uh, space, where basically in this Euclidean space, we can use classical Euclidean tools to do our computation. Because in general, working with Lie group members is not, is not that straight uh, forward when we are trying to do classical manipula manipulations like an, an average, uh, for example, of, of several values of interpolation. Um, yes, and especially when we want to do a Kalman type filtering. So we, we have these prediction equations, update equations. Uh, so all, all of these operations, which are typically Euclidean, are done in this um, Euclidean uh, space, which is isomorphic to the Lie algebra. So we we saw we can see in this illustration that we have some operators here taking us from one space to the other. Uh, for example, the exponential uh, operator or the, or the matrix exponential will bring us from the algebra to the group, while the logarithm will bring us to to the algebra. And this hat and v operator are mappings which go from algebra to this isomorphic Euclidean space. And now that we have this kind of representation, we can define uncertainty also on Lie groups with the so-called concentrated Gaussian distribution, which uh, we can imagine as being unwrapped from the group to the Euclidean space. And it is usually defined in such a way that it exists in the Euclidean uh, space with a certain covariance matrix. And when we are working with uncertainties on Lie groups, we are always uh, manipulating these uncertainties in the actual Lie algebra. In several simulations uh, for the 3D marker case and also some uh, later uh, data on, on real data set, uh, and the conclusion on more, was more or less the same, is that by using our Lie group representation, uh, we were able to uh, avoid these jumps in error where actually gimbal lock occurs. And this happens when you have an SO3 joint like the shoulder. If you have an elbow, this is not that um, uh, that often. So mostly in SO3 joints, we can notice these these kind of uh, wrinkles in the in the area, which are ironed out by using uh, Lie group representation. Also, what happens if you have an IMU? Uh, when you enter gimbal lock, uh, this error doesn't tend to get corrected, but then accumulates over time. So you actually have again another uh, drift in uh, in your results due to these accumulated errors thanks to gimbal locked. So that was the uh, motion estimation and now we'll move on to intention recognition. So this intention recognition is part of our SafeLog uh, project where we have these robotized warehouses with robots carrying racks around um, and at, at the moment, robots are strictly separated for humans, but we want to have the humans inside, working alongside the robots, but of course in a safe manner. So where does intention estimation come into play? Well, we want to know where, the hum where these humans workers are going so that we can adequately plan and replan um, the paths of all the robots in the warehouse so that the warehouse achieves maximum efficiency. So here we have an example of a robotized warehouse, of real warehouse from our partner uh, Swisslog. You can see that it can be quite daunting to work in such a, such a warehouse, so perhaps we should even try to minimize encounters of robots and humans, because these robots are not equipped with lasers, with safety lasers, as, as they typically are, as safety is typically ensured in, uh, in current examples. Uh, so we want to have the human navigating through this warehouse uh, and also we want to know where the human is exactly going so that we can, as I've said again, increase the efficiency of the warehouse. So how will we approach this uh, intention estimation? Well, we kind of anchored ourselves in the so-called Bayes theory of mind, which says that humans in general have an intuitive grasp of our own and other people's mental states. In some sense, it's related to explanation by rationalization, uh, where you are arguing that the human's actions are actually rational, although we know that this is not always the case. However, in our limited example of a human working in the warehouse, we believe that this is a pretty good approximation. And in general, intention recognition can be quite challenging because human behaviors have large subtlety and diversity. So again, if we limit ourselves to uh, a simple example of a robot as warehouse, then we can uh, assume that our taken actions will depend on some workers' desires, which is actually a goal 
where the human wants to go in the warehouse. And then we will try to focus on, the, on action cues that can have the greatest effect on intention estimation on our current problem. So what are some of the assumptions that we made? We assume that the worker's position and orientation are the most important cues here and that they are available. So we have some kind of localization system. Also, our goals are predefined. So we have multiple goals where the human uh, can go and we want to uh, compute the probability of the human going to each uh, goal. Uh, a perfectly rational worker will always take the action that maximizes <clears throat> its expected value gain. So if the human is truly going through some goal, we will assume that it is taking a reasonable path to that goal. And regarding the methodology that we approach this, we estimated the intention with the hidden marker models uh, where we leverage the, uh, all the possible paths that the worker could take with the current path that the worker is taking uh, also by um, a generalized Voronoi diagram. So you can imagine that the big warehouse that we showed is not always available for testing. So what we did in collaboration with our colleagues from KIT uh, Germany is that a, a virtual reality warehouse was created and then human along with robots moved in this warehouse and followed predefined goals. And then from this data, we, we, were, we were able to manage uh, and simulate uh, multiple situations, which, which would be very difficult, of course, in a realistic warehouse. So here we see one example. We see the human starting from here, and then it, the human went to the brown goal. And here we see the result of our algorithm. I just need to emphasize that the colors here correspond to the goals, while black uh, here represents unknown. So we also have uh, probabilities saying that we stating that we don't know where the human is actually going or that the actual state is unknown. So you can see here as a human went closer and closer to the yellow goal, its probability increased. But since there were also other goals that humans could follow, its probability was not that high. And this is the reason why unknown was uh, that, that high at the moment. And then once the human passed this yellow goal, uh, probability for, uh, for the magenta goal um, and the brown uh, goal increased uh, simultaneously. Also, the cyan goal was here more or less the same. And then when the human passed the, uh, the uh, yellow, uh, sorry, sorry the, the magenta goal and got closer to the cyan and then turned to the uh, brown goal, we can see that this is reflect reflected by these probabilities. But it's not that probable. We'll still take into account that uh, any of these other two goals is possible and then when the human actually turned toward the, towards the brown goal it was pretty obvious then that it is that it is its uh, final estimation so um, in the end we also wanted to test how um, the human can move inside the warehouse we want to predict human's trajectory and then replan the robots accordingly so that the efficiency of the warehouse in increase. So this was done in collaboration with our colleagues from CVUT. In their uh, simulator, we used our intention estimation and trajectory prediction algorithm for this purpose. And what we achieved in the end is that um, we were able to increase the efficiency of the warehouse. But the trick here is that humans don't have to always follow the actual path. They can deviate from the optimal path. And this can then trigger a replanning of the robots in the warehouse. And if we know where the human is then, when the human deviates from some kind of planned path, where, where we know where the human is going, when we estimate its intention, we can then replan accordingly uh, for all the robots and not lock the warehouse. So what we did here is that we managed to achieve, for example, with three humans, an 80% increase in robot deliveries, but also uh, human deliveries because uh, remember that uh, robots can actually block the path of the human and this can also make the human deviate and go back again, etc, uh, etc. Et so again, we had a 29% increase in total deliveries. So we can, this preliminary analysis show that with such a system, uh, warehouse efficiency can be increased. So to conclude, uh, we presented human motion estimation on Lee groups and intention estimation using HMM and action validation. In general, understanding humans is difficult. Even humans are not always that good at, uh, at this, especially because we can behave irrationally. But this is a necessary skill for 
future robot companions and uh, with a lot of data this will probably become easier and easier. Here we, you can see the bibliography, you can freeze and look at our, and our colleagues' papers. Thank you for your time.